Hey guys, welcome back. And after the draft combine, we always have these major storylines. Big players that we might not have seen in round one or two prior to this. Now they might be in there. So today we are doing a two-round mock with trades because I do think we're going to see some teams move up here. And I'm really excited to get into this. Now before we get into it, big thank you. We just hit 2,000 subscribers. We're on that road to 5K. If we could get to three or 4,000 before the draft, I would really appreciate it. So if you guys haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and comment types of videos you guys want to see in the future. On top of that, be sure to go check out my Draft Combine winners and losers video where me and the Mock Draft guy went through and talked about some of our some of the best performers of the week. Um, I'm really excited to get into this, so let's do it. The Chicago Bears are at number one, and I think if we learned anything this week, it said Justin Fields is going to be traded. It seems like there is a growing buzz that Fields is going to be traded. So what we're going to do first is we're going to trade Justin Fields. Now, it's not going to affect this mock necessarily, but I think Chicago is going to make a deal with the Pittsburgh Steelers, and we're just going to get 51 back, and we're just going to give up a fifth here and just force that trade through. Um and try and get that pick. Okay, so of course it doesn't want to do it. It usually works. The, the trade machine on here is actually broken. So when we pick for the Steelers, we'll just say it's a Bears pick. But I think Justin Fields is out the door. And uh, Caleb Williams is coming in. People are making up narratives about Caleb Williams at this point. He said he wants ownership in a team. I'm sorry, I didn't hear him say that. He's a diva. None of his teammates like him. I haven't heard a single teammate come out and say they don't like Caleb Williams. He didn't show his medicals. Why do the Chiefs or the Texans or the Packers need his medicals? He shared his medicals with the teams that are going to be interested in him. Look, Jaden Daniels didn't test. Drake May didn't test. He didn't need to test. The college tape speaks for itself. Caleb Williams is one of the best quarterback prospects that we have seen in quite some time. And Chicago is 100% taking him. I don't see a world where he is not the guy here for Chicago. I think he's the no-brainer number one pick. And the draft starts at two. Washington has this pick, and I think it's going to be between Drake May or Jaden Daniels. I did this in my last mock, and the more I think about it, I think Jaden Daniels is the guy for the Washington Commanders. This one is getting some steam here. The Jaden Daniels hype train is moving along, and people seem to really like Jaden Daniels. He's got an arm, bit of a slender frame, but he can throw the football. He can run elusive in the open field. And in a Cliff Kingsbury offense, I think that makes a lot of sense for your next quarterback. So I'm going to take Jaden Daniels at two. And then there's the draft at three here. Is New England going to trade back? Are they going to try and acquire more capital, maybe get an offensive tackle? And for this one, we are going to mess around with that scenario. I know we have heard some rumors that – well, maybe the Patriots are going to stay where they are, take a quarterback, sign a veteran, whatever. I want to mess around with some new scenarios here. So the Atlanta Falcons have been rumored to be in the in the running for this. I'm not going to have the Falcons be the team that trades up. It's going to be the Minnesota Vikings, a team that I think is going to give up number 11, number 42, and a future one here. Maybe you get back some sort of a fifth, some sort of compensation down the board. But I think the Minnesota Vikings are going to trade up and take Drake May. Look, the Vikings are a team that has a lot of talent. Jordan Addison, Justin Jefferson, a pretty solid offensive line. TJ Hawkinson, they're looking for their long-term franchise quarterback. One of the big stories that I took away from the week is that Kirk Cousins to Atlanta seems like it is a really possible scenario here. And if you guys stay tuned for my free agency picks, I've had that one written down for weeks. I think Kirk Cousins to Atlanta makes so much sense. I think they're going to be more willing to give him a fully guaranteed deal than Minnesota. Minnesota tried to trade up last year for Anthony Richardson. It didn't work. And even if you do retain Kirk Cousins, I still think this is a very real possibility here to where Minnesota can draft a quarterback that can develop under Kirk for a year or two, and then you can move him down the line. I think Minnesota is going to take a quarterback here. I've got them going with Drake May. At number four, we've got the Arizona Cardinals, and it's going to be Marvin Harrison Jr. It's been Marvin Harrison Jr. since the beginning of the draft process. 
I think there is a massive gap between him and Malik Neighbors and him and Romo Dunze, and I know that is a controversial take here. I don't think it's as wide as people think it is. I think that I think that um, Marvin Harrison Jr. is the far superior wide receiver prospect, and he is going to be the move here for me at number four for the Cardinals. At number five for the Chargers, I think this is a trade back spot as well. Yes, you could go with the Malik Neighbors or a Romo Dunze, but I'm not in love with any of those guys. New England at 11, they could be looking to maybe move back up. You've got Denver. You've got the Raiders. I don't think they trade in the division. The Saints are here. I think a team is going to come calling for a quarterback. I really do. And it is going to be the Seattle Seahawks for me. Seattle is a team that, yes, they don't have a ton of draft capital in this class. Two third-round picks, I think they probably would have to give up both of them. Um, They're going to get back five. They're going to give up a future one, maybe a future three. I don't really know exactly what the compensation is. But I'm going to have Seattle trade up into the top five to take J.J. McCarthy. Now, J.J. McCarthy, I think this is the most perfect scenario for J.J. McCarthy to fall into. Geno Smith looks like he is going to be the starter here. So I'm going to keep him the starter. Draft J.J. McCarthy, who I think could be a really good backup. And he could be that developmental guy for a year or two while he's still under contract. You've got a rookie head coach. You're going to want to go make a splash. J.J. McCarthy, one of the most toolsy quarterbacks in the class. I think he is going to go in the top five. Whether the Patriots stay at three and take Drake May, I think that's a possibility. Or I think the Vikings could trade up here. The Chargers have nothing to lose by trading back. They might get the guy they want at five, at 16. I think this is the perfect pick here. And McCarthy to Seattle is going to be the move. For the New York Giants here, I am going to take Malik Neighbors. He is my wide receiver three. I know that the guy has elite speed. I have some questions about him, but I still think he's a great fit here for New York. You got to go get weapons for Daniel Jones or whoever is going to be your long-term starting quarterback. Malik Neighbors has the ability to go 0-60 to incredibly fast. We didn't get to see it at the Combine, but this is a guy who's explosive, and I think he's got a real possibility to go really high in this draft. At number seven, we've got the Tennessee Titans. This pick has also remained the same for quite some time, and that is Joe Alt to the Tennessee Titans. You pair Joe Alt, and now your franchise left tackle, with Peter Skaronsky at left guard. Now Will Levis has a little bit of extra protection there, which I think is very, very important. And you've got to be, be able to build one of the best teams around him. So I am going to take Joe Alt here at number seven. At number eight, we've got the Atlanta Falcons, and I think that this could be Romo Dunze, I think would be an excellent addition here to Atlanta. But I think after what we saw from Dallas Turner, he's the no-brainer pick. This team tried to throw Arnold Ebicady out there. It didn't really work. This team off the edge, there's some question marks there still. Dallas Turner is an absolutely phenomenal athlete at the position. He's long. He's quick. He's good against the run. And and this defense, I think he could be a game changer. This team is going to add pieces to the defense. You brought in Raheem Morris, a defensive-minded coach. I think their first pick is going to be a defensive player here, and I've got him going at number eight. At number nine, we get the Chicago Bears, and we're going to go with another edge rusher here. They draft, they traded for Montez Sweat, but I think Jared Verse is going to be the pick here. I think he is the perfect 4-3 edge, strong body type. He's a guy that you can move really anywhere Uh, can play that outside linebacker role, can play truly off the edge. I think Verse is a fantastic edge rusher, and he proved it on one of the biggest stages he could have, an absolute freak athlete. And I think the Bears, it's between a receiver and an edge, and I've got them going with the edge here uh, for Eberflus and a defense that is already arguably going to be top 10 in the league next year. I think they just got even better adding Jared Verse. At number 10, we got the Jets. And now I think the Jets are in an interesting spot because they could go with any of the tackles, but they're all still on the board. Olufashanu, J.C. Latham, Amarius Mims, Troy Fautanu, all those guys are still here. Talise Fuaga as well. And we're going to have the Jets trade back. Romo Dunze is on the board. Teams are going to come calling for him, trying to jump teams like Indianapolis. The Saints, the Broncos, the Patriots, all teams that I think would take Romo Dunze. I think the Jets are looking to acquire more draft capital here. And I think Jacksonville at number 17 is the perfect spot 
They give up 48, maybe give up 117 as well. Jacksonville moves up to take Romo Dunze, my personal wide receiver too here. Odunze is a really, really good receiver. He's got the speed. He's got that DK Metcalf type athleticism. Great hands, great ball tracking ability. I think this will be a home run pick for Jacksonville to go getting number one. Calvin Ridley's a free agent. Doesn't look like he's going to be returning to Jacksonville. Romo Odunze, I think, is going to come in and be a better player than Calvin Ridley. And uh, I think if he's on the board at 10, Jacksonville is going to be pounding the table to try and bring him to Duval County. And I love this fit for that Jaguars team. At number 11, we got the New England Patriots who traded back, acquired an extra second. They're feeling really, really good about themselves right now. And they've got all the tackles they could want on the board. Receivers are here. Corners are here. I think this draft has fallen exactly the way New England has wanted. And I am going to take Olu Fashanu to the Patriots. You've got to take a swing here. And Olu Fashanu, still a bit of a raw prospect, but the upside is immense with this guy. They have absolutely no offensive line in New England. If you go get a Bo Nix or a Michael Panix and with one of those two second rounders, you've got a chance, I think, to really make a nice swing and maybe be a relevant team in the future. Right now, though, I think this team is in desperate need to try and bring in some help on that offensive line with Trent Brown and Mike Unwinwu, both free agents. I don't know if they're going to be able to retain either. Uh, I know they got the cap space, but I don't think either are coming back. I think Olu Fashanu is a home run for New England here at number 11. At number 12, we got the Denver Broncos, and I really am considering quarterback. Bo Nix is here, and I am going to go with him. Look, I know people don't like Bo Nix. They don't like the age. They don't like what we saw at Auburn. He's a completely different player than what we saw at Auburn. What we saw at Oregon, I think, is a more of the realistic player that he is. And this is a guy that Sean Payton is going to love. If you think of a Sean Payton quarterback, short, white, semi-mobile, good arm, not amazing. Yeah, Bo Nix is that dude. Alex Smith type athleticism, I, that's who I compared him to. Drew Brees, I, I don't hate that. Uh, Jalen Hurts, I've heard as well. Like Bo Nix is a good quarterback. I think he should be a first rounder. I've got him at number 12. At number 13 for the Raiders, I don't think they expected Talise Fuaga to be on the board. J.C. Latham, Amarius Mims, even Troy Fautanu, I think is a bit of a surprise here. And I think that's where we are going to go here. Uh, With Troy Fautanu, I'm going to go way off the board. Take him higher than people are expecting. This is a guy who absolutely wowed at the combine. I don't think anybody was expecting him to come in and do what he did. A guy who we thought had shorter arms for the position, measured in at 34 and a half inches. That is good length for the offensive tackle position. If you want to play him at tackle, he can, but you could swing him into guard as well. I think this is a guy that Antonio Pierce is going to want. Whoever's the quarterback, they're going to need to move guys on that offensive line. Uh, around. Um, I think Faltanu could play guard, but he could also be a really good tackle for them long-term. I think this is a nice situation for him here. No corners have come off the board yet. We're hearing rumors that Marshawn Lattimore could be out the door here. I could see the Saints moving him for a potential three because that cap does go up pretty significantly next year. Now, I know there's an out in the contract, I was looking at it today for my Colts as a potential move. I would do it for a three, but maybe corners in play. But if you've got Talise Fuaga still on the board, I think he's got to be the move here. This team is desperate for some offensive line help. I really think they are. And I think this is the perfect scenario here. Uncertainty about Ryan Rams check. Trevor Penning has not worked out on the left side. Fuaga is an elite athlete. I think he's going to be a really good fit here to be whether that's a Rams checks replacement, whether it's a franchise left tackle, I think he could play anywhere. I would probably venture to play him, keep him on the right side, but I really like that spot for him. And then we've got the Indianapolis Colts, my team. Brock Bowers is here. Terry and Arnold, Quinion Mitchell are here. You could talk me into any of those guys, and I would be like, yes, yes, and yes. I love all those picks. But I think this team is going to go with a round one receiver. Brian Thomas Jr. and Adonai Mitchell are the two guys right now that I think a lot of people are going to be like, oh, yeah, those are those are Chris Ballard type players. I know Brian Thomas Jr. tested out incredibly. I think Adonai Mitchell is going to fall into the top 20. I really do. With the way he tested at a 4-3 at his size, with the ball tracking ability, his ability to block, I mean, Adonai Mitchell, I think, would be an excellent addition for the Indianapolis Colts. 
and he's going to be the pick here. I think this would be massive for Anthony Richardson's development. Bowers, a bit undersized, and he's a tight end. I just don't know how high he's going to go. I'm taking him at 15. And then we're here at 16, and the Chargers have their choice between the two guys that I probably would have taken for them if they were at five still, between Brock Bowers and Terry and Arnold. And for me, I think it's got to be Terry and Arnold. At 16 to get the first corner off the board, I think that's excellent value. Arnold has shown some elite athleticism. He's got incredible movement abilities. He's fluid, can stop and go on a dime. He's going to be a really good corner, and I think there's a great spot for him. He's a lightning quick athlete. He's going to go play for the Bolts in in L.A. Now we've got the Jets, and I think there's some questions here. Brock Bowers is still here, right? How could you pass up on Brock Bowers at 17? Well, I still think Amarius Mims would be a good pick. J.C. Latham would be a good pick. J.C. Latham feels to me like another Mekhi Becton type of player. Take take that as you will. Not the biggest J.C. Latham guy. Amarius Mims, though, I am very big on. I think he's going to be an excellent player at the next level. But a team that also, I think, wants to get pass catchers, I'm going to do it. I'm going to take Brock Bowers to the Jets here at number 17. I think the value is just way too good to pass on here. One of the best tight end prospects we've seen, a guy who you can move all over. He could play a receiver type role. He could play in the backfield. You can use him on end around. Yeah, Brock Bowers is going to be the pick, and I know some people might not like it, but I think that's a huge addition for the New York Jets. At number 18, we've got the Bengals. Receivers here, I think they would have gone Brock Bowers if he was here. Receiver, I mean, Brian Thomas Jr., if you decide to move on from T. Higgins, I think that's a really good move, but we aren't going to go with that. We are going to go with the tackle. Amarius Mims still on the board. We're taking him here. Guy's an absolute freak. 6'8", ran a 507 40-yard dash. He's one of the best athletes in this entire class. I've been high on Amarius Mims since last year. I've been telling you guys he has a chance to be one of the best tackles. I wouldn't be surprised if he is the number one tackle in this class in three years. I know he's got limited playing experience, but you could play him on that right side. He played left tackle in practice as well. I mean, this is a guy who I think is a very versatile athlete, and this is excellent value at number 18 for a guy who could be an excellent player. At number 19, it's Quinion Mitchell for me without question for the uh, LA Rams. Cornerback is in, is still a need for this team. Their secondary was not one of their strengths last year. Quinion Mitchell is right up there. Arguably, he might be my CB1 when it's all said and done. Every question we've had about him, how is he going to play in press? He was awesome in press at the Senior Bowl. How is his speed going to be? Ran a 4-3-3, the second fastest at the cornerback position. Every question that we have had, Quinion Mitchell has answered. I think this is a guy who is going to be a home run pick for the Rams. And yes, the competition's not great, but he's got all the tools and you can fall in love with that. He is my number 19 pick to the Rams. At number 20, we got the Steelers. This could be a spot where I could see a team trying to jump up to take a tackle. Latham is still on the board. Guyton is still on the board. Jordan Morgan is still on the board. Kingsley, Patrick Paul, Kieran Amagaji, a lot of guys still on the board. I don't know if a lot of them go round one, but I also could see a team trying to jump up for a receiver here. Maybe you want to move ahead of Miami. Maybe Philly could go receiver. Houston could go receiver. Dallas could go receiver. You know Green Bay is not going to. I'm going to have the Bucks trade up a little bit here with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, I don't really know what the compensation would look like, but I'm going to have them give up 89 and 126 in this deal. Try and keep their second, but we're going to have them move up just a little bit here to take Brian Thomas Jr. Falls outside the top 20, but Mike Evans looks like he is out the door. Tampa is in desperate need for that next long-term receiver option. And I think Brian Thomas Jr. is that guy. Pittsburgh, I think, would be open to making this deal with the tackle talent, the corner talent still on the board. You can move back, acquire more assets. I think you really like that. Tampa Bay looking to go get another receiver. We're going to have them move up here to take Brian Thomas Jr. Miami's on the clock here. J.C. Latham is the pick. Right tackle is a need for this team. I'm not overthinking it. I think Latham... Well, I'm not the highest on Latham. This guy's a brick wall. This guy is a really good run defender. And I think that's exactly what Mike McDaniel in this defense needs. 
At number 22, we've got the Philadelphia Eagles. And corners still are really good corners here on the board. Uh, I already know I'm going to get some flack for this. Don't want to hear it. Um, offensive tackle, for whatever reason, people want to go tackle for the Eagles here. I, I'm not buying it. Linebacker, I really like Peyton Wilson. And he will be a first-round pick, I'll tell you that. I don't know where, but I think he's got upside. We're, we're taking Laatu Latu here for the Philadelphia Eagles. Latu is my favorite edge rusher in this class. He's bendy. He's got all the tools. He's quick. Ran a 4.64, really good size. He's the perfect outside linebacker prototype for this new Eagles defense. Hassan Reddick is out the door. Yes, he can cover a little bit. Latu is, in my opinion, the best pure outside linebacker in the entire class. I'm taking him here at 22. At 23, we got the Houston Texans, and this is where Byron Murphy is going to come off the board. Byron Murphy is an excellent pass rusher from the interior. He's got some elite pass rush upside. Bit undersized, I would say. A bit shorter arms, but Byron Murphy is going to be a really, really good player, I think. Um, I still have Jerzon Newton and Tavondre Sweat above Murphy, but I think just in terms of upside, Murphy probably has that over those guys. So we're going to take Byron Murphy to Houston at 23. We just talked about Peyton Wilson coming off in the first round. I know tackle's still here. Tyler Guyton, great value. But I'm going to take Peyton Wilson. He is not going to be on the board for this team at 56. Peyton Wilson, I think, has played himself into first-round consideration here after running a 4-4-3, a guy who was good at the Senior Bowl. He's been fantastic for NC State. Great tackler. He's a tackling machine. He's in every single pile, it seems like. Great athlete, good in coverage. I think he's the best linebacker in this class. Him and Edger and Cooper, 1A, 1B. I love both those guys. I think Peyton Wilson of the Cowboys is a really good pick for a team that desperately needs some linebacker help. You got the Packers here at number 25, and we are going to be taking Cooper DeJean, a guy who's just a versatile guy who you can play anywhere on this offensive line. And I think that's exactly what this team are in this defensive backfield. Don't know how I got offensive line. I think one of the most versatile players in this entire class. We're going to take him at number 25. And then the Steelers, who traded back a few spots, and I still think they're going to get a really, really good player in Tyler Guyton at 26. A really good athlete. I could see him easily going higher than this, but we're just going to have him go here. I think this is a real possibility that Guyton to the Steelers, great athlete. We saw Mike Tomlin scouting the offensive line at the Senior Bowl a guy who can play that right tackle. You can move Broderick Jones to the left side or vice versa. They're both so athletic. You can move them anywhere. I really like Guyton to Pittsburgh. Now at number 27, we got the Arizona Cardinals. Now this could be a spot where I could see a team come calling for a receiver. Buffalo, Detroit, Baltimore, San Francisco, Kansas City, all there. I'm going to have Arizona trade back slightly because I think Carolina is going to come calling here. Try and get into the first round. They don't have much draft capital, but we're going to give them number 102 and a future five from Pittsburgh just to move up six spots and try and come get your guy in this receiver class. And it could be really anybody, but it's going to be Xavier worthy for me. Look, the size is 5'11", 165. You don't love it, but this guy can absolutely fly. He is ran the fastest 40 time in the history of the combine. I, I think he's going to go in the first round. And I think teams are going to be trying to jump Kansas City to come get this guy. I think that the Cardinals are in a position where there's some guys on the board that you like, but there's a very real possibility those guys are still there at 33. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm going to take those guys, and um, I'm going to have Carolina move up to get Xavier Worthy. At number 28, we got the Buffalo Bills here. Again, I think this that really messed this team up. They're going to take Keon Coleman I'm not paying attention to the 40 time, 463. Not amazing, obviously, but he plays way faster than that. And that's not his game. He's not this speedy guy after the catch. He's a contested catch guy. He's not the most amazing separator, but a guy who I think you could throw in the ball and he's going to come down with it. A Mike Williams type of receiver. I've got Keon Coleman at 28 to the Buffalo Bills. At number 29, we're going to take Jerzon Newton to the Detroit Lions. And the rich get richer here. You get one of the best run defenders, one of the best athletes off the interior that we have seen in quite some time. I truly believe he would have absolutely broken the combine if he was healthy. Um, 
absolute freak. This team needs help on the interior of their defensive line. I really, really like this move for the Detroit Lions. The Baltimore Ravens here at 30. I'm going to go with the corner here. Nate Wiggins has fallen a little bit, but I think this is a good spot for him. Nate Wiggins is a good corner. I do like Nate Wiggins. There's some question marks, obviously, about that size. Um, came in at 173, 6'1". Very questionable frame, but I, I do think he's got a chance here to go inside the top 30 still, and I've got him going to Baltimore at number 30. At number 31, we are going to take Chop Robinson to the San Francisco 49ers. Super raw edge prospect who's got immense upside. It's ridiculous the idea of what Chop Robinson could become, and I think a team is going to fall in love with that, and they're going to take him here at number 31. Then the round out the first round, we know Kansas City is going to go with the receiver, or do we? I'm not going to do it. I'm going to take a guy that I think could be a long-term answer in a deep receiver class. I don't know if they're going to be invested in Troy Franklin like that. We're going to take Braden Fisk here to round out the first round, a guy who I thought was really, really good at both the Senior Bowl and Combine, super freak athlete. You pair him alongside George Karloftis, Felix Anadike Uzama, long-term, and Chris Jones on that interior. Kansas City's front four is going to be just as good as anybody in the NFL. I really, really like that move, and I'm going to have him go number 32 to Kansas City. At number 33, a guy who I really, really loved still, uh, falling down boards, but Kool-Aid McKinstry at 33 to the Arizona Cardinals, I think is tremendous value. A guy who people really, really love, including me. I still think he's sticky in coverage. He moves really well. Great zone corner. I think he's perfect for the Cardinals, who is looking for some secondary help. I'm going to take him here at number 33. At number 34, we are going to be taking Michael Penix Jr., to the New England Patriots, they're still going to get that young quarterback that they can mold. But they just traded back, got him some help, and now they can go get him another weapon later on. If this is how the draft shaped up for New England, they would be in excellent shape. Michael Penix Jr. has one of the best arms, one of the best. He just places the ball in some of the best windows you can imagine. I think this will be excellent for the Patriots, and I've got him going at number 33. At number 35, we've got the Arizona Cardinals. And you're looking, offensive line is in play, and Jackson Powers Johnson has fallen a little bit. And on the real draft, I just don't see this happening. But I just think that the value with some of these guys, some fallers here, because you had guys like Peyton Wilson go, I think you could see the range start for Jackson Powers Johnson here at number 16, 17. A lot of these teams could go that direction. Pittsburgh could do it, but... Tackle value is there. A team that I'm going to take Jackson Powers Johnson here, um, a name that honestly slipped my mind, to be completely honest. He is going to be a first-round pick, but come on. The value there is insane to get the best center, the best interior prospect by a mile in this class. At number 35, I think is great value. You can move him to guard or you can keep him at center. I think that's the move there for Arizona, regardless of who's on the board. At number 36, We've got the Washington Commanders. We're going to go with an edge rusher here. There's a number of guys you could go with, but we're going to go with Marshawn Neeland out of Western Michigan, a guy who I could see hearing his name called in round one. Really explosive off the line. He's been incredibly productive for the Broncos over the last couple of seasons. I think this is excellent value for him. We're going to take him here at number 36. At number 37, we've got the the Chargers on the clock, and Jordan Morgan is still here. Absolutely. You can play him at tackle, either tackle position. You can move him to guard. He is a guy that I like to really move anywhere. I think this is awesome for the Chargers that wants to continue to build the trenches and help protect your Justin Herbert long-term. We're going to take Jordan Morgan here at number 37. At number 38, we got the Tennessee Titans, and we are going to go with a receiver, and that is going to be Lad McConkey. Lad McConkey ran a 4-3-9. He's got really good speed. But he's a guy that I think could come in and just win. He can win down the field, quite honestly. And he's an incredible route runner. I think he's perfect for what Tennessee wants to do. He's going to be the pick here at 38. At 39, I think we will see a trade here because Troy Franklin is still sitting on the board. And he ran well. The size is going to be questionable for some teams. But I think a team is going to come calling. 
Now, what team is that? That's the question. And I just don't know that a lot of these teams love that idea. Does Atlanta want to move ahead of New England, Green Bay, try and get that done? Yeah, I think they do. So we're going to have Atlanta come in and trade with the Giants just a few spots to try and jump the Patriots and trade up four spots. You give up 142, and you're going to go get your guy in Troy Franklin. Dallas Turner and Troy Franklin would be awesome. You've got a deep ball threat and your contested guy. If you can go get him a slot, this is a team that could be dangerous in the NFC, with depending on who's their quarterback. So I really, really like this move. At number 40, we've got the Washington Commanders again. It's Zach Frazier for me. I like Graham Barton. This is no shade to Graham Barton in the slightest. Zach Frazier is that guy. I am all in on Zach Frazier. This team just cut Nick Gates. They need a long-term center. Zach Frazier is going to be that pick. Protect Jaden Daniels. I absolutely love it. At number 41, we've got the Green Bay Packers. Offensive tackle, I don't really want to go Kingsley here. I do still like Graham Barton. This is a guy who you could play at that tackle spot if you really want to. Probably going to be a better guard at the next level. The value is incredible for it. Graham Barton is one of the more versatile offensive linemen. I think he could play all five positions. He's going to be the pick here for me at number 41. At number 42, we got the New England Patriots back on the clock. Corner. And his rake straw is good value, but I'm going to go with a edge that I think fits this defense a little bit better. And it's Chris Braswell. This is a guy that I think athletically is fantastic. He checks all the boxes. He fits that outside linebacker mold really well. And you pair him alongside Matthew Judon. I think there's a really good tandem. They didn't draft a receiver here, but I think this team has some really nice buzz. They've got future later picks. They can address the receiver and one of the most loaded classes I, I think this is an excellent draft if this is how it plays out for New England. For the Giants here, I am going to go with Darius Robinson. I know that the numbers are concerning. Ran a 4.95, but this guy is got all the moves that you could want. He's versatile, and he could be that Leonard Williams replacement for this team. He's not going to be that, that outside linebacker in this 3-4 that this Giants team runs, but he is going to be that inside edge that I think is going to be excellent for this team and exactly what they need. So I'm going to take Darius Robinson of the Giants here at 43. And then another Mizzou player comes off the board in Ennis Rakestraw to the Vegas Raiders. Rakestraw and Faltano I think is awesome for this team. And they've got a guy who's wiry, electric, quick to the football. And yes, the production hasn't exactly been the best, but I still believe that Ennis Rakestraw could be a good corner in the NFL despite questionable production for the saints here at 45 a number of different ways that this team could go but i am going to go with a i think we're going to look in the um edge rusher room braylon tries to disa isaac i'm not in love with it you know what we're going to go with the receiver here take xavier leggett a guy that i think could be that outside winner for this team michael thomas hasn't really been that guy for them you got chris olave Pair this team with some more weapons. I think Xavier Leggett is that guy for me here. For the Colts at number 46, there is some buzz that they might be losing Grover Stewart. Uh, that one would hurt for the Colts, I think, quite a bit. So you could look on the interior. Tavondre Sweat still sitting here. Uh, another guy who tested really well. That's Ballard's MO. We know this. Maybe you go corner. I still think they do. TJ Tampa didn't test. I think the Raz score would have been really, really good. I can see Cam Hart getting into this range. DJ James getting into this range. Um, there's quite a few guys here that I could see being the pick, but we're going to go with a guy that I still th think is a little bit unproven. We're going to take Kamari Lasseter. I like Lasseter. Don't get me wrong. He's still really raw, and I want to see him improve on his technique. I think the upside is tremendous with him. But there are still some question marks with them. I'm going to take Lasseter. Hope he can develop alongside Brent, Jalen Jones. And if you bring in a vet like Chidobe Awuzie, like a Legereus Sneed, a Marshawn Lattimore, I think the secondary gets a lot, lot better. I'm going to take Kamari Laster to the Colts at 46. For the New York Giants at number 47, we are going to be selecting Kingsley Suomatia out of BYU, a guy that I think might end up being a guard for this team. They cut Mark Glowinski. You could play him at that right guard spot. You could play him at left guard, to be completely honest with you. 
They've got holes on both sides. You're, there's talks that they're going to move Evan Neal inside as well. You could keep Kingsley at right tackle. I mean, there's a lot of different things you could do with Kingsley, which I think is why this team is going to fall in love with them. At number 48 for the New York Jets, you took Brock Bowers earlier, and we're going to go with the tackle again. Cooper Beebe is interesting to me because I think you could play him at tackle or guard, similar to Elijah Vera Tucker. And you know what? We're going to do that for the Jets. I know that tackle is a big need. I think they're going to address tackle in free agency, maybe play AVT at that right tackle spot next year. Maybe you get Tyron Smith or something like that. And then you'd need to really address the guard spots. I think BB might be the best pure guard in the entire draft class. Tested out incredibly well at the combine. I like him here to the Jets at number 48. At number 49, the Cincinnati Bengals took Amarius Mims earlier. I think they're looking for a receiver now. Roman Wilson is going to be that pick, an excellent route runner, a guy who's got really good hands. And I think he could be that Tyler Boyd replacement because I don't think they're going to bring Boyd back personally. Roman Wilson is going to be the move here for Cincinnati. At number 50, we're going to go with Edgerin Cooper to the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, They need an inside linebacker and outside linebackers. Their entire linebacking core was absolute garbage in the second half of the season. Just go make that move. I think Edron Cooper to the Eagles is one of the best fits in this entire draft class. Then we said that this pick was going to go to Chicago as part of a Justin Fields deal. So let's see if the machine will actually let us pull this one off here. 51. Let's just try and force this one through here. It doesn't, don't pay attention to the compensation. It won't look anything like this. All right. This pick is going to Chicago who drafted Jared Verse and they drafted Caleb Williams. Now I want to go get a vertical speed threat on this offense. And that's going to be Tez Walker. Tez Walker is, yes, there are question marks around him. But the guy's got some really, really good speed. Got some juice to him. And I think he could fit really well. Maybe you move him in the slot. Maybe you keep him on the outside. I think pairing him along DJ Moore, he makes this offense really, really scary. And I think that's a fun thought if you are the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Rams here at 52. Probably an offensive line spot to me. I just don't think Patrick Paul is going to end up being in this spot. I think that the the guards are solid. I'm not in love with very many of them. The edge rushers, Braylon Trice, did not impress. Adisa Isaac, Jonah Ellis. Don't really like any of these edge rushers here. Uh, corner, they addressed earlier. Linebacker, maybe. I don't love that for them. I don't love a lot of the talent here on the board for the Rams, but an idea I messed around with. I'm going to go with Jatavian Sanders here to the Los Angeles Rams. This is a guy who I think could just be another weapon for the Rams, and they can use him in a lot of really unique ways. They can use him as that vertical threat, and I think that's really enticing if you're a Rams fan. Higby got injured. We don't know what his long-term health is going to be. I'm going to take Jatavian Sanders to be that answer. At number 53, we are taking Tyler Newbin. We're going triple defense here for the Eagles. Newbin, I think, is the best safety in the entire class. He is maybe not the fastest, but this guy hits hard. He's very smart, very good ball skills. I really like this for the Eagles. And then again, you're going to see fallers. Tavondre Sweat, Jackson Powers Johnson, two guys that fell a little bit. Tavondre Sweat to the Browns is a match made in heaven. You pair him with Miles Garrett and Dalvin Tomlinson on that interior, This team is going to be impossible to run the football against. I'll tell you that much. Really, really, really like this move for the Browns. I can see the Browns looking to trade up to get Tavondre Sweat. I think they're going to be enamored with this guy. Um, Sweat, as I mentioned, I'm I'm a huge fan of Tavondre Sweat. Unfortunately, there's going to be guys that fall. Braden Fisk, Peyton Wilson, guys that haven't really gotten first-round consideration. They move up. Jackson Powers Johnson falls out of the first round. Troy Franklin falls. It's just the way it goes. Not every mock draft is going to be perfect, but and some guys are going to go later or earlier than you were expecting. At number 55, we are going to take a corner here. Mike Sanger still, I think, has a very real possibility of sneaking into this spot. You need that slot guy. You get Mike Sanger still, and you pair him with Jalen Ramsey and Cam Smith. I think that team's got some incredible athletes on the outside, and then you got Sanger still in the slot, who's an absolute ball hawk. I absolutely love this for this team. You cut Xavier Howard. Corner is a need for them. 
I'm going to go with Mike Sanders still. This is a team that I think would have gotten Tavondre Sweat as well. At number 56, this is a spot where I could see Patrick Paul coming off the board. But I'm going to go with Kieran Amagaji. Peyton Wilson and Kieran Amagaji, I know nobody watched Yale games. Kieran Amagaji has some really good juice to him. Good athlete. He's got some injury history there that might be concerning to some teams, but I'm really a big fan of what Kieran could bring to your football team. And for a team that's going to be probably losing Tyron Smith, he could be that long-term left tackle replacement for you. So I'm going to take him here at number 56. At number 57 for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, a number of ways you could go here, but we are going to go with Christian Haynes. Could play that guard spot. I thought their offensive line improved quite a bit. Center is going to be a scenario that this team is going to need to address. But I think Christian Haynes, I wouldn't be surprised if he took snaps at center, to be completely honest. I think he's one of the better PR guards in this class as well. I really like what he can do. I'm experimenting with that one. Haven't really messed with that idea. But we're going to go with Christian Haynes here at 57. At number 58, the first running back is going to come off the board. And that is going to be Trey Benson out of Florida State. Ran a 4. I believe he ran a 4-3-9. Really good time for his 40. He's got size. He offers upside in the receiving department. There's not a lot to dislike when it comes to Trey Benson's game. And I'm going to take him here at number 50, 58. At number 59, we're going to go with Ricky Parasol out of Florida. I am very big fan of what Parasol can bring to your team. I think he's kind of the receiver that the Texans are looking for. A guy over the middle of the field with really, really solid hands. I think this would be a really good pick for them. At number 60, the the Buffalo Bills, I think corners in need. Safety, I just I really can't go with Cam Kitchens in this spot. I could see Cole Bishop maybe going here. I wouldn't be shocked by that. Linebacker is a position that I keep messing with the idea of them going with simply because they just they were absolutely killed in terms of the just bad linebacker play. But they drafted some guys last year. I don't want to go there. We're going to go at the corner. TJ Tampa's still on the board. But I'm going to go with a guy that has been just boosting his draft stock at left and right in Renardo Green. A bit of an older prospect, but I think he's going to sneak into the second or third round territory. A uh, really, really good player who's got good, good instincts, closes quickly. Another guy that's an older prospect with a, not a ton of production, but – the traits are all there. I think he's going to be the pick here for Buffalo. For the Detroit Lions, I think this team would have loved to get Mr. Um, uh, Christian Haynes. Not on the board here. I think they're going to wait just a little bit here on the defensive side. Maybe go corner. TJ Tampa is here, and he could be a really good zone guy. Maybe you look to go get a guard. Uh, receivers where I'm considering here. Jalen Polk still on the board here. I think the value for Jalen Polk is fantastic if you're the Detroit Lions. So we're going to take Jalen Polk here, a really solid receiver. You can play him on the outside with Jamison Williams and Amon on the slot. I love that. I absolutely love that if you're the Detroit Lions. I think that is one of the best receiver trios we've got in the league. Jalen Polk was a revelation for college football this season, and I absolutely love this move. And the Baltimore Ravens. We're going to go with Jalen Wright out of Tennessee. Now we're going to have to scroll a little bit, but I think if we're talking about a running back prospect that boosted their stock the most, Jalen Wright might be that second running back taken off the board. Guy who's got really explosive speed. He's quick, can get outside the numbers, and I think that's exactly what Baltimore is looking for in a runner. We're going to take him here at number 62. At number 63, we got the San Francisco 49ers. To me, this is where we are going to see Dominic Puny come off the board here to the to the uh, San Francisco 49ers. Can play guard, can play tackle. He's got basically 50-50 split playing both. That's what this Niners team needs as a guy who could play everywhere. And then with the last pick, Kansas City passed on a receiver in the first because they believed they could get a guy in the second. And to me, it's Malachi Corley. This is a guy who you can put in a lot of different formations, get him the football in space, and he can go. I think... Maybe that's not the type of receiver that this team is going to target, but I think they're just looking for guys that are going to create after the catch. And I think Malachi Corley to Kansas City is going to be the final pick of this mock draft. But that's going to do it for me, guys. Let me know what you guys think. Which picks did you like? Which picks did you not like? 
Leave a comment, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios.